Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. Robbery is the most prevalent of all crimes and the one which is the most difficult to prevent. The ingredients of the crime are something of value and a person willing to take some risk to get possession of it. On January 27th, Rita Hudson, employed by the International Diamond Imports Company, arrived at the railroad station to claim a shipment of diamonds consigned to her firm. A very simple procedure involving no risk, since only Rita and her employer knew what the parcel contained. Oh, Rita. Did Miss Hudson get in yet? No, sir, she hasn't. Get out. Take a look around. Will you come in, please, Miss Stevens? Yes, sir. Yes, sir? Rita's very late. She should have been here by now. Well, uh, would you like me to call the railroad station? We could call and see if she picked up the parcel. Well, I, I don't think there's anything to worry about. She's probably... You better call the station. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, would you please give me receiving? Yes, thank you. Look at them, Barton. Worth at least $35,000. Yeah. How did you know I had the diamonds? Who are you? Look, Mrs. Hudson, you're here and there's nothing you can do about it. We've got the diamonds and we're going to keep them. Oh, you are a couple of brave men, two of you, and you have to tie me up like this. What are you afraid of? We're not afraid of anything, Mrs. Hudson. We just don't want to have to hurt you. How did you know I had the diamonds? Now, look, shut up. We have enough problems without having a yapping woman around. Now, be quiet or I'll have to quiet you. It must have been somebody close by, somebody who knows our office routine. You listen to me, lady. I don't want to hear any more questions out of you, nor I don't want to hear any talk out of you. You just sit there and you behave yourself or else we're going to have to hurt you. So I suggest you play it smart. 10 o'clock, we got a two hour wait. Beautiful. Matthews. Headquarters told me one of your employees disappeared with a consignment of diamonds worth about $35,000. Well, how did it happen? My assistant, Rita Hudson, went to the railroad station to pick up a consignment. It's ten minutes' drive from here. She picked them up all right. I checked on that. Then vanished into thin air. You say she was your assistant? Yes. You see, I import from all over the world. So most of my correspondence is in a foreign language. Rita knew six languages. She took care of that side of it for me. 
That sounds like a responsible position. Yeah, it is. I can't understand why she did this. Well, maybe she didn't do it. Ever done any? She might have been robbed. I doubt that. Why? You see, she and I were the only ones that saw the correspondence relating to this consignment. Or knew it had arrived. You see, it was written in Dutch. Where do you keep your correspondence? Right here in Rita's desk. Miss Stevens is pinch hitting for Rita. We keep it right here in this top drawer, as you notice on the lock and key. Well, it's easy to duplicate a key. Tell me, you a linguist too? Not a very good one. Did Rita have a husband? Yes, as a matter of fact, I talked to him only a few moments ago. To find out if, for any chance, Rita had gone home after picking up the diamonds. The address is 713 North River Street. May I use your phone? Oh, Mr. Matthews. I'll be right with you. Operator, get me Highway Patrol headquarters. Huh? I'm sorry, Mr. Van Dyst. Your receptionist said you were busy. She didn't want to let me in. Who are you? It's Rita's husband. Mike Hudson. Who are you? Matthews, Highway Patrol. All right, never mind that call. Can you tell us where your wife is, Mike? Uh, I'm here to find out. I got a call saying that Rita didn't come back here after picking up a consignment of diamonds. Now, what about it? I'm not accusing Rita. She's been so loyal. But the fact is that she vanished with $35,000 worth of diamonds. You think she stole them? I don't know. Dirty old... All right, all right, that's enough. This is going to get us no place. Come on, wait for me outside. You wanted me? Well, uh, yes, you see, uh, Rita and I were pretty good friends. Well, just office friends, but she did tell me something that might explain a lot of things. Yeah, what was it? Well, it's about her and her husband. What about him? Well, he just can't hold a job. With his temper, I can understand that, but what's that got to do with the diamonds? Well, I don't know. I just... I just thought maybe she got tired of supporting him. Oh, I see. Thanks. I'm going, Mr. Van Dyke. I want to take a look at the Hudson house. I'll be back. Will you mind what's left of the store, Lydia? I've got to go to see the insurance people. Uh, yes, Mr. Van Dyke. Line, please. Hello, Ernest. Lydia. Where are you calling from? At the office, but it's okay. Van Dyce is gone. How's it going? Well, look, I'm a little scared. Highway Patrol's been here, and, well, I don't believe they think Rita took the diamonds. Oh, don't get jumpy, honey. They can't prove anything without Rita. How much longer before you meet Darrow? Very soon now. Oh, I wish I were going with you. And we could keep right on going. Right out of the state and out of the country. What's the matter with you? That would put the cops on your trail. Oh, Lydia, Lydia, look, you've got to stay put for a while. And honey, don't risk calling from the office, huh? Oh, okay. Search all you want. You won't find anything. Well, he gave us a pretty good description. When's the last time you saw her? This morning, when she left for work. How'd she behave? Is she all right? Did, did she say anything unusual? No. Did you and Rita fight very much? Some. What about what? Mostly about my temper. And look, I did most of the quarreling. She didn't. And she wouldn't steal either. Look, Mr. Hudson, I understand this, but I want you to stay right here. There's going to be an officer with you. He'll monitor all of your phone calls. You still think she's guilty, don't you? Look, guilty or not, i got to find her. Now, look, do you mind if I use your phone? Go ahead. Thanks. Highway Patrol headquarters, please. Highway Patrol Headquarters. This is Matthews. Will you report in yet? Yes, sir. He checked in quite a while ago. I told him about the robbery, and he went down to the depot to investigate. He should be back any minute. Wait a minute, sir. Here he is now. Hello? 
This is Matthews. Why don't you find out the station? Well, not too much. It might be a lead, though. 1476 checked out a car against the hot sheet. It had two men and a woman in it. Seemed to be in a hurry to leave the railroad station about the time Rita Hudson picked up the diamonds. Oh, then he got a license number, huh? Well, no, he didn't write it down. Didn't seem to be a reason to. But he does remember it was a two-tone gray four-door sedan. All right, look. An APB out on this. If Rita was taken, the consignment tip-off must have come from within the office. You think it could have been Van Dyst for the insurance money? Yeah, maybe. I'll tell you what. Meet me outside of the Van Dyst building. You bring the undercover car, I'll bring mine. I'll switch with you there. Then I'll be in touch with you. Okay, I'll be there as soon as I can. Mr. Hudson! I'm gonna leave you now. This is gonna be a stupid thing to say, but look, try not to worry. Okay. We'll find her. Thanks again. Yeah. Please let me go. You've got the diamonds. What more do you want? It's not a question of what we want, Mrs. Hudson. It's a question of what the cops want. They'd just love to have an eyewitness. Oh, relax. What are you going to do with me? Oh, let me take care of her. She's getting under my skin. I can't stand it. No, not here. But make no mistake, Mrs. Hudson. We will if we have to. Very soon, we're going to leave this house, and you'll walk very nicely out of it with us, get into the car, and we'll go for a ride. Eventually, we'll stop, and you'll get out when we think it's safe. How you get out, Mrs. Hudson, depends entirely upon you. That's right, Mrs. Hudson. It all depends on you. As I previously stated, I have been very fortunate in securing a perfect blue-white diamond of 12 carats. If you're interested in this rare diamond, please get in touch with me immediately. Any news, Mr. Matthews? Yes, we're making some progress. We're sure Rita left the railroad station with two men. We've got a description of the car and the license number. We're checking at headquarters right now. Won't take too long. Tell me something. Do all your outside calls go to the switchboard? Yes. Have your operator keep a record of all the numbers in the calls, will you? You think another of my employees is involved? Well, you told me all consignment records are kept in that desk drawer over there. Yes, and you pointed out how simple it is to duplicate a key. Yeah, that's right. We'll be in touch with you. Thanks a lot. Uh, is it all right if I go to lunch now, Mr. Van Dyce? Certainly, did you? Thank you. Take my car back to the station. Get another undercover car. I'll be in touch with you. Okay, good Bye. hunting. Matthews hoped she would, Lydia Harris panicked. Unaware that she was being followed, she sought out a public phone booth. Ernest? Yeah. Lydia, look, I'm scared. Where are you calling from? A phone booth. Good, what's wrong? Look, Highway Patrol spotted you and Rita. They've got a license number and a description of the car. What's more, they know another Van Dyce employee was involved. Oh, honey, I've told you over and over again that their job is to suspect everybody. Now, look, they can't prove anything without Rita. Oh, look, I don't care. I'm quitting Van Dyce as of right now, and I'm coming over there. No, no, wait. Uh, hold the line a minute. Trouble? Yeah. She's hit the panic button. Says the cops have somebody who got the license number and description of the car. That sounds like a police trick. That's what I think. They could have tricked her, hoping she'd panic. But then if she's headed here, they'll be right behind her. 
Hey, listen, Lydia, there's no point in coming over here. We're going to leave in a few minutes to meet Daryl, anyhow. No. I I'm coming over there. Now, you wait for me, Ernest. All right, honey. We'll wait for you here. But hurry, huh? Well, she's coming anyway. We've got to get out of here fast. We'll clean this up. The cop car following her. Let her lead them to the wrong place. Well, then you're cutting Lydia out of the deal? Sure, sure. It means more money for us, doesn't it? Ed, what are we going to do with her? We'll take her along with us. She'll come in handy. Well, what do we want her with us for? The police will be on our heels anyway. by entering the house at 1729 Front Street. Find out who lives there. I'll stand by. 10 4. 10 4. Ernie? Ernest? Ernest? Headquarters at 2150. 2150 by. 1729 Front Street is being rented by an Ernest Sober. Find out all you can about him. Have Williams meet me at Sober's house. 10 4. Mr. Matthews, uh, oh, what are you doing here? I followed you. What for? Well, I want some information. Come on back inside. Well, I... Look, Mr. Matthews, I'll, I'll be glad to help you any way I can, but I, I just don't think there's anything. What do you know about Zilber? I don't even know anyone's name's over. Well, what are you doing here? We know he lives here. Now, come on, look. You see this? There's an H on here. This has got to be Rita Hudson's. This guy's playing you for a sucker. Oh, he's been here and gone. What are you fronting for him for? Okay. What do you want to know? You tipped Zover off that Rita was going to pick up the diamonds this morning. She was going to be alone. Is that right? Yeah. Who else is working with him? Well, his friend Chuck Barton and a... A man named Darrow. Do you know where they went? They were going to meet Darrow. They said here, but I don't... Yeah, I know. It's the wrong place. Huh? That's all I want to know. Come on, let's go. to headquarters. Headquarters by. I want roadblocks on every road out of Stillwell and at every junction. Be on the lookout for a car described by 1476. Another car is going to meet it. Now, hold on. Ever seen this, Darrell? Mm -hmm. All right, describe him. Uh, well, uh, he's about 50 with uh, gray hair and a mustache. I guess he's about uh, a 5'10". Thanks. The other car will be driven by Darrow. He's about 50 years old, got white hair and a mustache. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four? Ten four. Up 
You want her out of the car? No, I'll leave her there for the time being. Waiting's the part I hate. Time's on our side now, Barton. While the cops are wondering what Lydia's doing in my house, we'll be on our way east with Darrell. Uh, I wish you'd get here. Turn your motor off and step out of the car, please. Darrell is late. I wonder what's keeping him. Maybe they got Lydia by now. She'd talk. So what? What could she tell him? She doesn't know where we are. Well, we'd better get another car fast. They might just have a description of this one. We leave in Darrell's convertible when he gets here. May I see your driver's license, please? I don't understand. What's the trouble? Take it out of your wallet, please. You're under arrest, Mr. Darrell. On what charge? Grand theft. Turn around and put your hands on the car. Thirty-two twenty to headquarters. Headquarters by. I just stopped the suspect Darrow. Had to shoot him. Send an ambulance to Route Twenty One, five miles south of Sixty. Ten four. Ten four. Zoper and Barton. Those are the other two men? Well, it might help you if you told me where you were going to meet them. Mr. Twenty was right about the position of Zuber's car. It's got to be right over this hill here. What if Rita Hudson's still with him? Well, we can't risk her neck. All right, here. You stay with her. I'm going to take a look. can't wait anymore. It's too risky. Yeah, Darrell may have been picked up by now. Well, let's beat it. We've got the diamonds. But he's got the customers for them. We'll sell them ourselves. I guess you're right. Let's get out of here. Well, we got to pick up another car. We can do that in town. All right, hold it! How are we going to get out of here? Here comes a car. I'll grab it. Okay, buddy, out of the car. Come on, out of the car. You heard me out of the car. Come on, move. Right where you are, hold it. All right, now turn around. Put your hands on top of the car. At first, Jim. Come on up. You're all right, huh? I'm fine, thanks. Okay. Untie her. Oh, by the way, you all right, too? Yeah, I'm okay. Lucky. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters, by. Hey, Ambulance and coroner out here right away. Ten four. Ten four. I hope you'll be with us next week. Until then, remember, no matter how new, 
The safest device in your car is you. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week. Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. safety and protection of those innocently caught up in the activities of criminals is as important to the law enforcement officer as is the capture and punishment of those criminals. On September 9th last year, what started out as another robbery of a store created a unique and dangerous situation for the highway patrol. Open up that safe. Come on. Open it up. You shouldn't have done that. Well, he shouldn't have grabbed my arm. Get the money. Let's get out of here. Fred! Wait a minute. She's just a child. She must have seen us. You can't hurt a child. Don't be afraid, honey. <laughs> We're just playing a game. Is that man your father? You don't have to be afraid of me, honey. I'm not going to hurt you. And I won't let him hurt you either. Fred, do you see the way she's looking at me? Like she's trying to read my lips. I don't think she can hear her speak. All right, so she can't hear her speak. But she can see. She's a witness. I'll just tap her easy. I'm not gonna let you touch this child. What are you talking about? We gotta get out of here before somebody comes in. And we can't let her spread the alarm. Uh-uh. All right, we'll take her with us. That's kidnapping. We'll get rid of her later on. Come on. All right. But I'm not going to let you hurt this child. Oh, we're not going to hurt her. Come on. Get me the highway patrol. Highway patrol. This is Mrs. Haskell. Someone robbed our store. My husband's been 
badly hurt and my little daughter's gone. What's your address, Mrs. Haskell? 29 Loring Road. Susie's gone. They must have taken her. She can't hear or speak. What am I going to do? She's only 10 years old. Try and keep calm. We'll have someone out there right away. What have you got? Robbery, store owner hurt, possible kidnapping of child. Something else special. Child who can't speak or hear. I'm going out there. Here. This is as far as we go. I'm not going to take the kid any further. Now, come on, get out. What do you think you're going to do? Come on. You're not going to hurt her? I'm not going to hurt her. She'll be all right in a few hours. Well, what if she doesn't get loose? She'll get loose. I'm not going to tie the knots too tight. Come on, baby. She could uh, die out here. Oh, Fred, listen to me. We're only about four miles from the store. No one saw us. Let's take her 20 miles away. It'll take her long to get back. Besides, you know she can't talk. She looks like a pretty smart kid. Look, maybe she can write. Maybe she can lip read. I tell you, we don't want any witnesses until we're way out of this area. Fred, wait a minute. What's the matter with you? I can't help but think of our own little girl. She would have been about her age. If she hadn't have died, we wouldn't be leading this kind of life, always running away. We would have had a home, a decent life. All right. All right. You can't leave her here in the woods. You gotta take her back to the highway where she can be found. Then what? If the police stop us, they'll be able to identify her easily. They're probably searching every highway and byway right now. But they may not know she's missing yet. Hey! I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. He never hurt anyone in his life. Why did this have to happen? Looks so pale. We mustn't let him die. An ambulance is on the way. Tell me about your little girl. Susie's only ten. She can't hear her speak. And now I can't find her. Right, now, just take it easy now. Easy. Tell me about Susie. She's a very sensitive child, alone a great deal of the time. That's her chair. She likes to sit there and read. Likes to see people come and go. She likes to be near her father. How do you communicate with her? She can lip read and she can write. We can communicate with her, but it's difficult for others, especially children. Do you think they could have taken her with them? Well, if she saw what happened, they'll probably hold her as a hostage. I'll be right back. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters by. Alert all units about missing girl. Age ten, blonde hair. Name Susan Haskell. Last seen wearing a blue skirt and a gray sweater. Use caution. She's being held as a hostage. Ten four. Ten four. Anything happens to that kid? The ambulance will be here any minute. Any news about Susie? Oh, don't worry, we'll find her. I want you to go to the hospital with your husband. Don't you ever do that again. Anything? Negative. Here's the store. This is a 50-mile circle. We got roadblocks here, here, and here. They could be hiding out somewhere. The kid's still with them. Somebody's got to spot them. They got to be inside that circle. Nothing in these reports. 
What about this area? 2248 checked that just a few seconds ago. In this area? 2146 checked that. Negative. I want every car and every road and highway inside that circle checked. Shake them down. Don't miss a thing. Yes, sir. Get me the county hospital. What are you doing with that rope tied around your wrist? What kind of man are you? Honey, honey, are you all right? Come on, get into the car and don't try that again. Fred, don't be so rough with her. Let's kill her. She's nothing but trouble, and besides, she can finger us. You're not going to kill her, and you're not going to leave her here. Oh, don't you worry, honey, he isn't going to hurt you. Look, if the old man dies, she's the only one who can tell him about us. Can I get that through your head? She's the only witness. I don't know why I even listen to you. Please, Fred, if we let her out on the highway, about 20 miles from here, she'll be out of this area. So? So by the time they find her, we, we'll be out of this area entirely. Now, come on, let's get out of here. All right. Only if she gives us any more trouble. She won't. Now, let's get going. What have you got? Nothing. Nothing. Kid's father's still in the hospital, unconscious. All we know is the kid's disappeared. We're not even sure she's with him. She has to be. Is she alive or dead or what? One of our units will spot him. Before or after they kill the kid. You know something? We don't even know what we're looking for. They only had some kind of a lead. They can't disappear into thin air. They gotta be inside that circle. Could be there from out of state. All units, check out of state cars. Don't be afraid, honey. You're safe now. Now we'll have to stay on this dirt road. Show her how to get back on the highway. Hurry it up. We got time. It'll take her a couple of hours to walk to the highway. Come on, hurry it up. When we go, follow us. Walk the same way we're going. You'll come to the highway. People will see you. Someone will take you home. Hurry up. We're behind schedule now. Charlie's expecting us in Glendale. You're the one who wanted to stop into that store. Well, we had to do something. I was running out of cash. Look, come on, hurry up. Charlie's expecting us in Glendale tonight. Goodbye, honey. I'm sorry. and highways within a 50-mile radius of Haskell's store were checked in an all-out search for the missing child. But the roadblocks and the search of every car in the vicinity yielded nothing. Take it easy. You're all right now. Thirty-one seventy-eight to headquarters. Headquarters by. The doctors think Hassel will come out of the coma soon. Call me as soon as you can talk to him. Right. Stand by. 3178 found Susie. Picked her up on the highway. He's standing by. I want to talk to him. How's the girl? Is she all right? She's all right. They didn't touch her. You're sure? Looks like she's walked on a dirt road. She's been crying and she's upset, naturally. But she's okay. 
Could you get any information out of her at all? No. What's your 1020? Highway 65, near Lane Crossroad, about 40 miles outside of Glendale. Glendale, Glendale. Oh, I know a little restaurant just outside of Glendale. It's called the Roadside Cafe. Take it there, get her something to eat. I'll meet you. 10-4? 10-4. I'm glad she's been found. So am I. Cancel the APB on Susie. Set up roadblocks all around Glendale. Put a couple of notebooks out of the file. We'll try them on Susie. How about a chart of license plates? Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to talk to Susie's mother. Attention all units. Cancel APB on Susan Haskell. Suspect still wanted. Unit 2496, set up roadblock south of Glendale. Unit 2470, set up roadblock east of Glendale. Unit 2481, set up roadblock west of Glendale. still worried about that child. I could never live with myself if anything happened to her. Nothing is going to happen to her. I'd like to go back where we left her. What? I'd like to make sure she's safe. Look, if they find her, we're not safe. That's what you ought to worry about, us. I know, Fred, but that poor kid. Look, I'm telling you, she'll be all right. You're just upsetting yourself about nothing. So forget it. Let me call Charlie. Inside, no okay. K. Hello, Susie. I'd like to help you. Would you like to help me? I'll tell you what we're going to do. This is going to be like a game. But before we start, I want to tell you, I've called your mother. I told her we found you so she's not worried. And another thing, your father's going to be all right. You ready? Am I talking too fast for you? All right, Susie. Now, don't be nervous. I'm going to ask you some questions. Now, you take your time in answering. I know you can lip read. So answer yes or no by nodding your head or shaking it. Now, if we don't understand each other, we can write on this pad. Did you see what happened? Did you see them hit your father? How many people were there? One, two, three... A man and a woman. Susie, I have some pictures I want you to look at. Now, I know that you won't be able to find the man or the woman, but I just want to know what kind of people they are. Was the woman dark like this? Young or old? As old as your mother? Susie, 
Do you know their names? Red and Edith. What are you trying to tell me? Nice. She was nice. She gave you a handkerchief. You getting tired? You want to rest for a minute? Your dad's going to be all right. What kind of a car were they driving? Was it a small car? Oh, it was big. Was it a sedan? A convertible? A station wagon. Station wagon. What color was it? Blue? White? Red? Or tan? All right, now, Susie. I have some license plates here from different states. Do you remember anything about their license at all? Where they might be from? Oh, California. Do you remember any part of the number on their license plate? Thirty-two. These are the first numbers? Last numbers. Glendale. Oh, Susie. He was going to Glendale. Susie, you're a very sweet girl. You're very smart, too. I'll be right back. Suspects are a man and woman. They're driving a tan station wagon. California license. Last two numbers are 32. Woman's first name is Edith. Man's first name is Fred. They believe headed towards Glendale. The woman is dark-haired. Harper, you go patrol the area. Yes, sir. Set up roadblocks all through that section. Dennis, notify the Glendale police. Right. Susie, do you want to go for a ride in the patrol car again? You see, if we find the people who hit your father, you can tell us that they're the right ones. All right? Come on. Twenty-one ten by. Relaying message from hospital. Mr. Haskell regained consciousness, unable to give a statement to officer on duty. We're on our way to Glendale. Ten four. Ten four. Get out of here. All your fault. I told you not to fool around with that kid. Now, come on, get out. Come on. Drop your gun, it'll do you no good. You'll have to shoot half if you want me. Susie, get back in the car. Susie, do you hear me? Get back there.
He's had it. It's all yours. Yes, sir. Talk to your father. You want to go with me? I hope you'll be with us next week. Until then, remember, no matter how new, the safest device in your car is you. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week.